In this episode, let's take a look at the really unusual fluorescence phenomenon, two photon absorption. This phenomenon is used in two photon absorption microscopes to image cells buried deep within living tissue and can be used in volumetric 3D displays. Fluorescence is probably something that you're already quite familiar with and is the emission of light by a substance that has previously absorbed light. In most cases, the light emitted has a longer wavelength and therefore a lower photon energy than the absorbed light. Fluorescent dyes are used to alter the colour balance of fabrics and paper by absorbing ultraviolet light from the sun, for example, and emitting blue light. This gives the perception of a brilliant white rather than a slightly yellow off-white. In this simplified Jablonski diagram, we can see that a high energy photon comes in and excites a molecule to a higher energy state. After a short period of time, the molecule relaxes to its ground state, emitting light of a lower energy or a longer wavelength. The wavelength emitted is almost always longer as some of the excitation energy is dissipated as heat. It is possible, however, for a molecule to absorb two low energy photons and release a single high energy photon. This is a third order nonlinear process known as two photon absorption. This was originally predicted by Maria Gopert Mayer in 1931 in her doctoral dissertation. 30 years later, the invention of the laser permitted the first experimental verification of two photon absorption. Maria went on to become the second woman ever to win a Nobel Prize in Physics for proposing the nuclear shell model of the atomic nucleus. The unit for two-photon absorption cross-section is named the Gopert Mayer or GM unit after her. Ordinarily, when a photon of longer wavelength than the excitation wavelength interacts with a fluorescent molecule, it may perturb the electrons in the electron shells, but it never manages to excite the molecule and so no fluorescence occurs. Even if two photons arrive one after the other, once again they may perturb the electrons in the molecule but still no fluorescence occurs. The probability that a molecule undergoes two photon absorption depends on the square of the intensity of the incident light. If the light is intense enough, like the light from a high peak power laser, we increase the probability that two photons might interact with the molecule at exactly the same time, or at least within a few femtoseconds of each other. The time between the arrival of the photons must be extremely short, a femtosecond is one quadrillionth of a second. If these criteria are satisfied, then both photons can actually be absorbed. They can excite the molecule to a higher energy state, which then relaxes back to the ground state with the emission of a higher energy, shorter wavelength photon. To observe this experimentally, all we need is a fluorescent dye with a suitably large two photon absorption cross section and a suitably powerful laser. Fortunately, I have several fluorescent dyes in my collection. One of the most brilliantly fluorescent is Rhodamine 6G. This beautiful molecule absorbs light in the ultraviolet and green portions of the spectrum and emits light in the yellow to red. Rhodamine 6G has a two photon absorption cross section of 10 GMs in methanol at 1064 nanometers, which should be high enough to observe in room light, even with a relatively slow nanosecond pulse laser. Before I demonstrate two photon absorption, let's take a look and see how rhodamine 6G reacts to violet, green and red laser pointers. If I shine a violet laser pointer at the surface of the dye here, we can see that we've got high energy violet photons coming in and when they strike the cell, we're actually getting lower energy yellow and orange photons out. And this is an example of uh, quite brilliant fluorescence. If we take a green laser pointer, a similar effect occurs. Uh, once again, we're able to excite those dye molecules and produce fluorescence. So we've got a relatively high energy uh, 532 nanometer photon or green photon coming in. And then we've got once again, yellow or orange photons coming out. Interestingly, because the laser beam is able to penetrate the solution somewhat, we can see the beam through the solution itself. Um, bear that in mind when we come to take a look at two photon absorption because something very, very special happens with that. If we take a red laser pointer, nothing happens at all. The beam just passes straight through the solution. Um, it doesn't excite the dye molecules to fluorescence. This is because the red light uh, just doesn't have enough energy at all to excite those dye molecules. I suppose if it was possible to see electron shells around atoms, we would find that these red photons are indeed sort of perturbing those electron shells, uh, but not even close to producing the required excitation to cause fluorescence. Let's see what happens if we use a pulsed infrared laser on rhodamine 6G. 
On the left hand side here I have a 2 trees 1064 nanometer pulse laser. This was actually from a laser engraver, but it produces pulsed laser light at 89 microjoules in just 5 nanoseconds. This corresponds to a really quite high peak power of about 17 kilowatts per pulse, although the average power is about 2 watts. To this I've attached a homemade collimator as the laser is actually focused to a point by a built-in lens for laser engraving. I've actually made several of these for different purposes on the lathe. The one fitted produces a nice wide 4mm beam that can be focused down later on. If I place rhodamine 6G into the beam path, once again we can see that no fluorescence actually occurs. In fact, we can actually see the beam emerging from the other side of the cavette. This is because two photon absorption depends on the square of the intensity of the incident light. And so to see this effect, we need an extremely high light intensity. In front of the laser, I have a microscope objective fitted into a homemade mount. This focuses the light down into a very, very tight spot. The extremely tight spot results in a ludicrously high light intensity on the order of gigawatts per square centimeter. Now that the laser is switched on, we can clearly see at the focal point only a yellow orange fluorescent spot. This is unlike what we saw with single photon absorption where the entire beam path is illuminated. If I move the cavette around, you can see that I can illuminate any single point that I like within the cavette. The ability to illuminate a spot in a 3D volume like this is what makes two photon absorption so very useful in imaging deep structures in a two photon absorption microscope. A number of dyes can actually exhibit two photon absorption. Here is rhodamine B, which emits red light. Since the spot can be produced within a volume like this, it's possible with some scanners to address any point in the volume and illuminate it, which could be used in volumetric displays. There are actually a few academic papers on this subject, and the spot is termed a voxel or a volumetric pixel. Dyes do actually degrade over time, so perhaps it's time to investigate quantum dots. That's it for this video, but there are plenty more cool projects like this coming up, so be sure to subscribe and ring the notification bell so you don't miss new videos. A huge thank you to my new Patreons and channel donators who make science and engineering content like this possible. I'm really grateful for your generous support.